And we're, we're here to engage on the substance of the bill and spirit of cooperation. And what I can share is that if the bill passes as, as it is proposed, we may be forced to consider whether or not we would, uh, we would take any kind of action. Okay, well, I guess I'm going to take that as you're refusing to answer whether you did or did not, and I would probably take that as an affirmative. Um, Mr. Housefather, would you like to ask me? Mr. Mr. John, please. Whistleblower documents. Um, When you, you, a question is addressed to you, you can speak, and I'm afraid you cannot intervene right now. Anthony Housefather gets aggressive with Facebook Meta, asking if they signed an NDA, discusses the amendments made to the Australian bill, and the unprecedented use of Bill C-18. Facebook discusses removing aspects of the platform from Canada. I want to start by saying I think it's pretty ironic that the last time that Meta was here, Mr. Chan was unable to tell me how much ad revenue Facebook derived in Canada, but somehow today was able to extrapolate how much value Facebook offered publishers for links that publishers, uh, you know, uh, had had Facebook send them to. Um, So basically, I'm going to ask a number of questions. If I ask a yes or no question, I expect a yes or no answer, please. Last week, Facebook said they were disappointed that they weren't invited to come to committee. Mr. Dinsdale, did Facebook ever contact the chair of this committee uh, or the or the clerk of this committee asking to appear? Um, I'm not aware of the intricacies of that. I, that would not be an answer. That yeah, yesterday, that I checked, yes, answer. yesterday I checked with the clerk. The answer was no. Um, the last time Facebook was here, uh, Mr. Chan and Mr. Dinsdale asked a number of questions about the experience of Facebook in Australia when you threatened to take down pages because of the similar legislation to C-18 and then, and then Facebook did so, causing chaos for a week. Um, you said at the time that you could not answer, you did not know what happened in Australia. As a result, this committee summoned Mark Zuckerberg, your CEO, who could have answered the questions and he ignored the committee's summons. Given that last week, Mr. Dinsdale made the same threat to Canada um, about shutting down pages and Mr. Chan did the same in his testimony today, I certainly hope you're both able now to speak to the Australian experience. So various whistleblowers have stated that in order to plan for the Australian shutdown, they required multiple staff members to preemptively sign special NDAs. Mr. Dinsdale, do you normally require staff members at Facebook to plan to to, to sign NDAs for major Facebook events? Um, Again, sir, that is not a part of the business that I am that familiar with. I I would not be able to speak to, to that specific question. Were you or Mr. Chan asked to sign an NDA to plan for an eventual takedown in Canada? Um, I would say, sir, that we are here to try to engage in the substance of the bill in the spirit of cooperation and to express simply that uh, if the legislation passes as it is proposed, we may be forced to consider whether or not we would take that action. But I asked you a specific question. Oh, did you, did you, Mr. Did Mr. You, Mr. Housefather. Mr. Chan, the question is to Mr. Dinsdale. Mr. Dinsdale, Dinsdale, the question was to Mr. Dinsdale. Mr. Dinsdale, did you or anyone that you know of, were you asked to sign a specific NDA to plan for a shutdown in Canada? So again, we're we're here to engage on the substance of the bill and spirit of cooperation. And what I can share is that if the bill passes as as it is proposed, we may be forced to consider whether or not we would uh, we would take any kind of action. Okay, well, I guess I'm going to take that as you're refusing to answer whether you did or did not, and I would probably take that as an affirmative. Um, Mr. Housefather, would you like to ask me? Mr. Mr. Chan, please. Whistleblower Um, documents. When you, a a question is addressed to you, you can speak, and I'm afraid you cannot intervene right now. Whistleblower documents uh, from Australia um, said that although Facebook said implementing the ban was intended to affect only news outlets, Executives knew its process for classifying news for the removal of pages was so broad, it would likely hit government pages and other health and social services. It did, in fact, hit over 170,000 pages, including the Department of Fire and Emergency Services, the Council on Homeless Persons, Suicide Prevention Australia, Domestic Violence Support Pages, the Kids Cancer Project, the Royal Children's Hospital, the Jewish Holocaust Center, State Fire and Rescue during fire season, and municipal state territorial governmental pages. Um, Facebook then said that this was a technical error that Facebook worked to correct and that any suggestion that Facebook did this deliberately was categorically and obviously false. Mr. Dinsdale, do you agree that it was a technical error and, and, and that there was no attempt to shut down these pages? My understanding of the situation is, as we've expressed it, that uh, any any um, of those takedowns would have been done in error and were rectified as quickly as possible. 
Funny enough, they seem to have been rectified as soon as the Senate approved the revised bill with Facebook amendments. Um, the Facebook response team was able to then do it within a matter of minutes when the Senate um, adopted the amendments, which was eight days after the initial takedown. Can you explain, Mr. Dinsdale, why there was such a discrepancy, how these pages somehow couldn't get re restored in, 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 in a timely way, but then suddenly, um, when the Senate approved the new revised bill that Facebook had renegotiated, then the pages were magically restored? Um, I mean, that to me sounds somewhat in all due respect speculative. And so what I'm able to share is, is what we have shared, uh, that any errors that were made were rectified as quickly as possible, sir. Okay, that's that's fine. Um, but what we've understood again from whistleblowers is that Facebook did not use a standard canary process to text this algorithm precision and identify prevent overblocking before an action. And despite clear notice that the lockdown was affecting far more sites than publicly acknowledged, which would normally have triggered a pause or a rollback, senior executives ordered the full rollout to take effect within hours. So how then do we trust the fact that this was a technical error? And can I ask, did you do a postmortem in Australia? And can you assure us that the same situation won't reproduce itself in Canada? 30 seconds for an answer, Mr. Denzel. Thank you, Dr. Fry. Um, sir, I think that what I can share is that, again, if the bill passes as it is proposed and we are forced to consider uh, this option, that we would try to do it in as much consultation and, and transparency uh, as is possible. What that means, I, I, I certainly am not in a position to elaborate, but I can certainly um, I can certainly um, reiterate that any uh, any mistakes that were done in Australia were exactly that mistakes. Thank you very much. And I just want to start by saying that, of course, the committee can invite whoever it wants as witnesses. But normally we start from a list of people who approach our clerk saying they wish to appear. And according to our clerk yesterday, nobody had ever approached from Meta asking to appear. Um, I'd like to ask Mr. Dinsdale. Mr. Dinsdale, you were the first person, it was I think on the 21st of October, that made, and I'll call it a threat, you may not call it a threat, that Facebook would withdraw uh, news content in Canada. Mr. Dinsdale, did you make that decision on your own or did you consult with other people at Facebook in order to determine that you would make such a statement? Um, I think, sir, you can appreciate that anything that we would discuss is not made in isolation, that we're trying to express is the concerns that we have with the legislation and that we are very happy and, and thankful for the opportunity to, to discuss them today. The fact that the legislation uh, does not um, uh, does not describe the relationship between publishers and platforms in the way that I we I was agree just with. asking if you spoke with anybody else at Facebook. I'm assuming from your answer, your answer is yes, before you made that statement. Did you receive instructions from Mark Zuckerberg to make that statement? Did you did you did you have an approval from central head office in California to make that statement? Um, a direct conversation with Mr. Zuckerberg would be somewhat above uh, my officer. So I, 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 I'm not did, able to. Did, were you advised that he authorized you to make that statement? Were you advised that it was approved by him? Um, I don't think there was ever any discussion of it in that sense. We work as a, as a group that examines these things from a global perspective and from a local perspective. And uh, anything that was done in, was uh, was uh, part of the conversations about the impact of the bills and what they could be in Canada and, and also. But I mean, essentially, there was no directive in that sense. So so I'm, I'm going to, this will be the last question on this, I promise. Um, but the Canadian team would not have the authority to make such a decision, to make such a a comment on its own, you certainly had the, and you felt the support of your board and your executive team in California to make that statement, did you not? Um, again, sir, I, it's, when I look at the, the context of how we discuss these things, uh, I'm privy to the people within the group that I work with uh, and, and some of the communications that happen there, but I think it's safe to presume that we are not kind of out on a limb here. Uh, and uh, and um, sharing anything that's the that the the company at its you know and its foundation doesn't believe in. So no, of course. So it's, it, I mean, clearly, this is a systematic uh, procedure at Facebook to threaten national governments when they don't like their legislation with certain actions, like you did in Australia and like you did in Canada, which again, according to whistleblowers, was celebrated by both Ms. Sandberg and Mr. Zuckerberg. 
Um, Again, sir, this is an expression of our concerns with the bill and the concerns with the, but, the, but you the didn't potential just express, outcomes of the You bill. didn't just express your concerns with the bill. That would be one thing. You threatened to take an action that would affect 21 and a half million users in Canada. I believe, sir, we expressed um, our, our concerns with the bill and wanted to be transparent about the unintended consequences that it might lead to. We, well, well, they would be very intended consequences. The intended consequences would be Meta would make a decision that it intended to make to strip Canadian users the ability to see news. So let me ask you, Mr. Dinsdale, um, as you may recall, Facebook confirmed through news reports that it had manually adjusted its algorithms during the 2020 U.S. election, uh, during the week of the election, to favor authoritative news brands in order to increase the integrity of information. Why would you have done this if news has no value? Um, I think that what, and, and I believe that uh, uh, Mr. Chan was, was about to answer some of this question as well, that the, the movement of our users and the preference of our users, as he indicated, are moving away from news. Uh, and we see that in independent reporting as well. We see that in the Reuters Digital News Report, where people answered a survey in that sense, and 21% and of people said on Facebook, they feel like they see too much news and would like to see less, and only 3% said so they'd like to see more. So when you look at the, the, the movements that are happening within our, our platform, then it's towards, um, towards that user preference that we're moving. Of course, but what you're threatening to do is take down, seconds, Anthony. What, what you're threatening to do is take down authoritative news and leave disinformation on your platform. Um, Sir, can, as I mentioned before, you know, I, 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 I didn't ask you. I didn't ask you a question, um, Mr. 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 Chen. You had talked about the agreements you currently have with Canadian publishers. You said they're not commercial licensing agreements. Will you provide this committee with details of those agreements? And I would remind you, we can summon them. Well, I am so glad that we live in a liberal democracy and operate in a market economy. And as you can appreciate, any kind of commercial arrangements that we have struck with partners are subject to um, the law and the rule of law. I cannot do that as much as I believe you may have asked somebody from a publication to do the same. I don't think that they can. Thank I you very much, Mr. Chan. I don't Chan. have the one on me either, by the way. Thank you, Mr. Chan. Your time is up.